So that includes every single router that's in an Oliver trailer today. And we are the worldwide leader. Um, nobody does what we do better than us. 40% of the Fortune 500 companies are using us, and that's, again, that's probably ticked up since this slide was originally made. And 50% of the Fortune 100 companies use us in some capacity or another. So for transportation, we are cleaning up in that space, and that is the specific product class that we're going to be addressing for you all here at Oliver. And top 25 of U.S. cities are using us 100%, again, in some capacity. We'll talk about some of our different use cases and the different things that we enable with our technology. So, Cradle Point, again, you know, we're talking about mobile today, but Cradle Point does an entire variety of different uh, solutions. Some of that will be branch, and Cradle Point is known historically as a branch cellular internet failover product, right? So your wireline connection goes down, I can now fail my business or my branch location over onto cellular internet, right? So that's where Cradle Point got our start, and initially, and the reason it's called Cradle Point is because initially we enabled that by putting a cell phone in a little cradle and kind of turning it into a hotspot. So before, now phones all have that capability, so we've evolved the times as well. So in, in addition to failover, we're doing a ton of stuff with mobile networking. We're doing the stuff to enable smart cities. Um, private cellular networks are now becoming a thing where you know maybe Wi-Fi is not a great fit for a large warehouse and there's metal shelving and those types of things. So we also enable private cellular networks to service those with cellular, which is going to give you better signal penetration than a traditional Wi-Fi system. We'll do big site wireless, so a lot of our customers now, because especially now with 5G and some of the advanced spectrum that is coming out, a lot of our customers are now kind of deciding if it makes sense for them to cut the cord in some of their locations. So, especially customers that have multiple ISPs spread all over the country, they've got you know, 20 or 30 different bills for internet, uh, they can now consolidate that down to two or three cellular carriers and go, and they're getting just as good a performance with cellular as they were with a wireline connection and just as reliable. So Internet of Things as well, uh, that would be like putting a credit point in an ATM or every red box is powered by a credit point. That's what facilitates their internet connection, process credit card transactions, track the movies that are going out, uh, digital signage as well, and networks for public safety. So you know, we'll have first responders, uh, EMTs, police, uh, a lot of those types of deployments as well. So, and this is for you guys, right? Taking your connectivity on the road. So, as you guys are, are traveling all over the country and finding great places to go set up, one of the things that is traditionally been a very hard thing, right, is having a good, reliable internet connection. So that's what we try to enable for you all uh, by, by, again, using Cradle Points routers and our, our advanced mobile technology. So, mobile offices too, that'll be another thing, you know, we've seen, especially over the last couple of years, right, in the midst of this pandemic, a lot of people are working remotely now, and they're taking their work on the road. I know a lot of my friends have been doing work vacations where they'll just go move to a city for a month, stay in an Airbnb or something like that, and they'll just keep working, but at night, you now I'm in, you know, Portland or wherever, and I can just do that, uh, as opposed to being locked into going into an office. So we're doing a lot with our customers for those types of situations as well. 
Uh, we're doing a lot with location data, and a lot of businesses are now utilizing this as well to get advanced analytics about different capabilities and different services that they want to offer in different locations. Um, so all of these things are, are going to be enabled by this new and broader capability of cellular technology. We'll talk a little bit about kind of where we are today with 4G. We'll talk some future stuff with 5G and what that's going to look like. And then we'll talk some practical stuff as well about how you guys can utilize us today, even for some more things than you might be doing, you know, those of you that already have deployed Cradle Point. We're, we can do more for you than just give you a Wi-Fi signal in, in your camera. So we'll talk about that. So one of the things that you know, we've seen a lot of our customers <laughs> asking us for is, hey, because we're integrating you guys into our vehicles, can you do other things for us? Uh, can you tap into you know, some of the AVL and telematics? Can you check my tire pressure? Can you do some of those things with uh, you know, checking battery? I know we were just talking about battery. So all those things that are accessible either via CAN, CAN bus, or OBD2, Cradle Point has some capabilities to tap into that as well. And we've got a lot of customers now that are starting to consolidate that, that stuff down where they might have, especially like I think of law enforcement, where they're carrying multiple devices that have a SIM card in there, and all of those things have a data plan. Well, if I can just put one Cradle Point router, sync all that stuff through that one device, I can consolidate that data plan down. Plus, I can have one platform to track and monitor all those different connections. So there will be some areas for you guys to maybe look at some of that as well. Again, we can stay as, as simple, and if you just want us for Wi-Fi, that's great, but I want to make sure that you guys are aware of some of the other things that you could potentially do with a great point solution. So, and again, a lot of our customers are deploying us at very broad scale. Uh, you guys are on the opposite end of that spectrum. Uh, I don't think any of you are doing like 30 camper fleets. And we got any 30 camper customers? Probably not. Uh, but just to give you an idea of you know our experience in this field, we do have customers that have thousands and thousands of individual endpoints that they're all managing through our cloud-based orchestrator. And here's a couple of examples. Uh, I, said, I said a lot about law enforcement, you know, Boise Police, Kaiser Permanente, New York Metro, uh, that is a big one for us. You know, all their public tra transportation utilizes Cradle Point for internet connectivity and for fleet tracking as well. We're doing a lot of stuff with school districts as well, putting Wi-Fi in school buses. Uh, that has been another big growing uh, field for us, especially again through the pandemic, because a lot of children, as they were doing some remote learning, they didn't have access to internet. So we could provide that via the school districts using their own busing systems. So in some cases, it was kids were working on the buses. In some other scenarios, we were having buses go to specific locations and set up pop-up networks to broadcast Wi-Fi signals so students have, had access to learn. So. We're doing some deployments also with drones. We're doing, you know, we got boats. I've got a big customer that is a, they do barge shipping, so they're tracking their boats and providing internet all up and down the Mississippi River. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that we're doing uh, for, for Oliver and, and you guys' deployments. So this is our IVR 900. Uh, this is one of our premier mobile routers. This device is a kind of a hardened, ruggedized device. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But this is this is it, and you know, it, that's it on the screen, and that's it here in my hand. So this is a you know a compact, ruggedized device. It's a metal housing. This is high quality industrial components. So what this is again it is going to pull cellular down, and you can see there's these SMA terminals here. Those will tap into an antenna, right? That gets roof mounted on top of your trailer. And that is a high gain omnidirectional antenna. So whereas you know, with having your cell phone in the camper, you may have trouble with the signal that way, but having that high gain antenna on the roof is gonna do a lot better job of pulling that information down. Uh, what this device is not, it is not a repeater, right? We're not taking a cell signal and just rebroadcasting a cell signal. We're taking that cell signal and turning that into an internet connection for you guys. So based on doing that, then we're able to, again, through that same antenna, broadcast a Wi-Fi signal that is accessible inside the camper and also out. So you know you can connect multiple devices to that the same way you would your wireless network at home, right? If you tie into that SSID, now all your mobile devices have internet connection. 
And depending on where you are in the country, right, I've had some questions already from some people about spots where there's, you know, slower speeds or inadequate coverage. Yes, that is a thing that we can't make cell signal be where it's not. Now, those networks and all of our carriers that we work with, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, are frantically racing each other to get the biggest network. And you see those commercials on TV all the time, right, where they're showing, here's our map, and it's all red or it's all blue. They're all competing frantically to get coverage in because they want your business, right? And we play Switzerland. Uh, if you want to talk to me privately about which carriers I like, I will bad out the ones I don't, and you can hear some of my war stories. But it, in, in, you know, on paper, we are Switzerland. We work well with all carriers. So I, I joke, but uh, uh, we, do, we do work with all of them. So what this device is also not, it is not a MiFi. So you, know, you get a lot of, I know my kids during the pandemic, the school issued all of them little MiFi hotspots, right? The, some of the differences between those devices, and this is, you know, when we get into, a lot of people have asked me, why, why, why would I want to spend, you know, the amount of money that you guys charge for these devices when I can just go get, you know, a little two or three hundred dollar MiFi? But part of that is going to be just the difference in modem technology. So, and I won't get too deep in the weeds on this, but most of the devices that you'll see, they're kind of those consumer grade in that price point are using a category four cellular modem. Those will take a couple of the lower frequency bands and that's what you get. Uh, the issue that you'll see with those is, one, those are gonna be lower bandwidth frequencies. There are fewer frequencies and they're usually going to default to one or another of those frequencies. So as the next couple of years come, carriers are already starting to take those lower band frequencies and reallocate that spectrum into 5G. So a, an older Cat4 LTE modem, and we also have those products, so I'm not bash, bashing that technology. It's just a different technology with different capabilities. Uh, but those, those frequencies will be sunset, so you've probably got a shorter longevity of product life utilizing those types of products. So the difference here is the IBR900 that we're using with Oliver is a Category 18 modem, so it utilizes I think it's in the neighborhood of 20 or 30 different cellular frequencies. And so not only do I have more different types of cellular coverage that I can pull in to give you guys a reliable internet connection, I also, our modems have the ability to aggregate those different pieces of cellular spectrum to combine them and multiplex them into one stronger signal. So um, what that means is I've got better coverage because again, I might be pulling from multiple towers at the same time to try to get you guys a good strong internet signal. And that those the lower end devices will not have the ability to do that. Also, they're gonna have antennas that are built into the housing, right? It's gonna be a very small antenna with not a lot of isolation. Whereas the antennas that we're using for Oliver for those roof mounted, you know, omnidirectional dome antennas with great isolation and very high gain. So it, it's a much different capability in terms of, you know, our devices with antenna on the roof versus a little Wi-Fi with an ins insulated antenna inside the housing. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and you know you can see the form factor here. We're mainly use, utilizing these currently for Wi-Fi, uh, but there are hardwired internet ports on here as well. So if there are things that you guys want to do, you know, to customize that or plug in, uh, you know, a, a smart TV or something, you want to plug it straight into the router to get better bandwidth than you might get over Wi-Fi. Still, I wanted you guys to know that those capabilities are on there. <laughs> so, in terms of the device being ruggedized, uh, that's one of the things that will also be a big differentiator between our product versus the consumer grade product. Again, this is a, a metal housing, uh, and it is rated for shock, rated for humidity, dust protection, uh, it, it is just a much higher quality organized product, so as you guys are traveling around, uh, hitting, a, hitting a bump or going over a railroad track too hard, it's not going to disrupt this device. I promise you that we've got military deployments that are utilizing these things and they're doing them a lot more abuse than most of you. I know some of you guys probably get into some extreme conditions and I'm not judging. I mean, you guys do too much. So. <clears throat> So I want to also talk about some of the other things that I mentioned before that we're mainly providing you guys a Wi-Fi connection uh, so that you've got good internet, you can stream Netflix, do all those things. But cradle points are also GPS-enabled uh, GPS devices. 
So through our NetCloud portal, which you guys may or may not ever want to use, you may just keep your, keep your Wi-Fi and go. But if you want to dive into some of the other capabilities of our platform, we do have a cloud-based orchestrator that you guys have access to that you can log in, you can see you know, GPS locations on a map, you can see what my cellular uh, health score is in a given region, and have an idea of, hey, what cell tower am I connected to right now? Uh, these are also things that our device can provide. And you'll see here, it will also show you historic location tracking, which could be a neat thing as you guys are traveling, you can kind of log some of those trips that you've taken and go back and when were we here, you can go back and see some of that utilizing our NetCloud portal. And this is one that I think actually might be a really good benefit for you all, is this coverage map. So as you're traveling throughout the country, you can see, and you can see here on, on the screen where it's kind of green, yellow, red, that is basically a ping and it's giving you that real-time feedback of what that cellular signal is like in those areas. So if I'm picking a spot that I want to go back and revisit, I may want to go see, hey, how is our cellular coverage there? Am I going to have good internet at this location? So that's something that you guys have access to pull down from our NetCloud portal as well. And it also can give you a good idea if, if your internet is slow, you can check that cellular health and see, is this just a bad spot? And, and that may be the case, right? There are some areas that I know driving out here, I, I'm, my phone is on AT&T and there were a good 20 or 30 minutes where I had zero bars of anything. And you know, uh, some places you just, there's, no, there's nothing you do in those scenarios, right? Now I do have customers that will leverage, um, I'll show you guys really quickly. And we've got a little pan access panel right here. That's where our SIM slot goes. These devices do have two SIM slots. So mostly we're setting you guys up with a single carrier, but there is a capability if you're willing to pay for an additional data plan, you could, for instance, have an AT&T and a Verizon SIM in this box. So that in an area where, hey, I don't have great AT&T coverage right now, let's see if, there, if the Verizon signal is, is better. So you don't have to go in and manually do that either. If there's poor AT&T coverage and the Verizon signal looks way better, our device will automatically toggle over. Now I will tell you there is like typically a three or four minute reinitialization period to go between carriers. So, but to me that's still much preferred than not having an internet connection. So again, that, that's if you want to pay for a second second cellular service. That's the same SIM card as in your phone? It's not. Um, typically these are going to be data only plans. So if you're putting a personal, you know, wireless device, uh, the carriers will usually, maybe they might not catch it right away, but usually over time they're going to see that, hey, that device, they can, they can see what kind of device the SIM has gone into. And if it's not rated for that type of device, they'll shut you down. <laughs> So again, you, you can try it and it may work for a few minutes, but uh, ultimately they'll either at least throttle it or they'll kick it off altogether. So, good question. So again, I did talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that our modems do. Uh, we write off our own custom software to, to power all these components. So rather than, you know, I, I know a lot of the other, there are a lot of other manufacturers that are adding cellular capability to their devices right now. Uh, Netgear comes to mind. I run into those guys a good bit. Uh, their devices are basically just buying off the shelf components, putting it in a box and handing it off. Uh, whereas our products are heavily tested and integrated by our engineers and we're writing custom software, not only to take those components, but to kind of point them. We, we just know cellular, we've been doing this since 2006. So we have a lot of expertise in making those modems to get the best coverage available from whatever is, is around in that area. Here's a little bit too, just about cellular technology and what we're gonna start to see over the next few years as 5G continues to roll out. So you can see we've got three different spectrum layers and mostly for you all, and this is what we're utilizing for you all today, is that lower band uh, of 4G LTE. And we're seeing a lot of coverage now from the carriers that is billed as 5G but it pretty much is that same broad spectrum. And the reason is because those longer wavelengths will travel further, they'll have better penetration through walls, trees, etc. So that's why for a mobile application, that is probably what we're going to continue to see for the next couple of years. Uh, and now eventually 5G will be in every tower that's out there, right? And then 6G 
or whatever, it, it'll continue to progress. But for the next couple of years, we will see that. But we're seeing, especially in our branch and IoT type deployments, a lot. There is a lot of demand and question about what can I do now with 5G now that this spectrum is being turned on. Uh, and one of the things that I always tell people is you can do a lot with it. You probably can't infect people with coronavirus. Uh, <laughs> Bill Gates did not uh, develop 5G to put coronavirus in you. And if you think that he did, I would encourage you to talk to some of the people that I work with at AT&T and we can recount some struggles of just getting <laughs> cell phones working. Uh, I don't know that they have the capability to do anything quite that advanced. But you'll see that that top layer spectrum, that 5G millimeter wave, that is basically going to be direct line of sight in major metropolitan areas. Any, a lot of the commercials and marketing hype that you see around 5G and having you know, multi-gig speeds uh, over cellular, that is going to be that millimeter wave. It is going to be pricey for one. Our components are probably about 4x the cost that utilize that millimeter wave technology. And again, it's direct line of sight. So it's important for you guys to know how some of this technology works, right? Because there's a lot of marketing hype going on around it. You have questions, sir? Yeah, just real quick. Uh, what I think I hear you saying is that today we're using a lower frequency and narrow bandwidth labeled 5G, but not getting the full bandwidth that is anticipated for the future. Correct. So benefits of being better penetrating around the corner of this stuff with lower frequencies versus ultra high microwave frequency. Right, that's so exactly right. The equipment that we own today will be capable as they put in the new. Uh, me, me, the IBR 900s? I don't know why I have six weeks. Okay, so no, those devices will continue to be 4G LTE, but I wanted to kind of reassure you guys that that's not necessarily a concerning thing, based, again, based on this use case. We're not going to see 5G in a lot of the state parks, for instance, right, right away. That's probably years out in a lot of these types of locations. And I would, I would say, don't be concerned about that. Uh, again, if you guys want to talk about one of our 5G products, I'm sure Jason and his team would be happy to put one in. Uh, but I, I would say it's probably not worth the additional cost. And for your use case of you know, streaming Netflix, if you're not doing something that is going to be you know, live HD video across multiple cameras, it's probably not worth worrying about it, in, in my opinion. Again, just to clarify, the product I bought at Orange is not 5G. Correct. Capable. Correct. Okay. And but I want that's why I wanted to kind of talk through what 5G actually is and what it's not. And if you see the, the marketing hype that says 5G is all these things, they're right. probably talking about that high end spectrum that is only going to be available in these like tiny little pockets of major metropolitan areas. And thank you so much. No problem. Any other questions on that? Sir? Uh-huh. It is, and it'll be those lower bands, right? The question was about our IBR 600, which is, we still have the IBR 600. Uh, there have been a couple of different iterations of that product with upgraded modems. Uh, we can take a look at the specific one that you have and get an idea of what modems in there, what bands it supports, and which ones of those may be coming offline. In some cases, we can get a little more life out of those by doing some software upgrades on the device, but there's a finite amount that that device will be able to do. So it might be, you know, at some point anyway, to might be worth looking at an upgrade. Either way, the IBR 600 device is not using that same category 18 modem. It's probably using our LP4 modem, which will have fewer frequencies. It's just a lower bandwidth device. I'm not saying it's a bad device, but um, you know, the ones that we're doing now with Oliver are the IBR 900, which will be that category 18. Sir? The newer uh, units that you have on the current production model, is that uh, retrofit available so you don't have to change the antenna on the outside? Is it just the internal component, or do you have to change everything? That is a good question. I have to. So, you are you using a credit point today? I think uh, the new trailer that I bought, the whole 466 in 2019. Okay. Um, I just got it. I don't know. Okay. To see exactly what I've got, but I'm just wondering if. Uh, I would say possibly. 
Uh, we'd have to look at the antenna specs. It's not the, you said that totally So you're talking about the uh, little, the, the, the Surecom product? The Wi-Fi that we offer. Gotcha. It's sort of better until we started partnering with you guys. It works totally different than that Wi-Fi register is intended to, for example, if you're in the park here and the park has a Wi-Fi broadcasting signal, it amplifies that signal. This technology is totally different. It's dependent upon magic and is explained this much better than I can not take say. I'm with you now. So yeah, the, the Wi-Fi repeater, right, the Wi-Fi booster is basically taking a park signal rebroadcasting it inside your camper. So what, what we're giving you is, hey, you don't need the parks Wi-Fi. If you've got a cellular signal, you're the Wi-Fi now, yes. right? That's that's what Freedom Point does. So it's, it's a different technology. But it can be, the Cradle Point can be, again, very easily installed on older model, older trucks. Uh, matter of fact, we have the Cradle Point in the Elite 2 demo that is down at the beach area, and that's exactly what we did with it. It has the older Wi-Fi booster, and we very simply, it's, it's very easy for us to go in and install a cradle point. That's uh, the outside antenna as well as the inside? Yeah, it's got to have an outside antenna, and then the router uh, mounts back in the attic compartment. But if you want to see how that would look, it's that's exactly what we did on the, uh, the demo unit that we have on the side of the video at the video. Sorry? Again, I'm going to make you correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, the, 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 the benefit, I suppose, would be is the year had both, and you again were in a McDonald's parking lot, and you could hook up to their broadcast Wi-Fi with the, the, the older Wi-Fi system, then you would not be using that as you were pulling through the, the cradle point. But you know the beauty of the system that we now install is again you're not dependent upon being somewhere that is broadcasting Wi-Fi, you're now depending upon do I have a safer signal, which is obviously a much, much lockier, lockier um, you're more likely to have a cell signal than you are something, something that is broadcasting Wi-Fi. Correct. And then what happens that I hear a lot from our customers is, and it's one of the, one of the reasons that we you know, with the like the prior point system is when you get in a campground, you've got 200 other trucks around you, know, and everybody's trying to pull from the same broadcast Wi Fi, it gets bogged down really, really quick. Whereas now, if you're hooked to your internet, Correct. you've got the speed of the, the router that comes through the trucks. So, that's really what made us, as a company, decide to offer a different technology. Was the feedback from the Wi-Fi booster that we historically used was really not that positive, and it's not because the devices work that well. It's just that where you guys are, there's so many people that are trying devices to are say talking to each other right within the camper. That will still be facilitated through that Wi-Fi connection, but there's no internet. Right, you just have you have a local Wi-Fi network. I know our owner trailer has a um, cell phone booster, so it is supposedly a case if you have one bar of service, it will boost it to two. Maybe. Will that help boost the cell signal to your router? Potentially, yes. Okay. Um, I would say probably having the high gain omnidirectional antenna is going to do about as well as having one of those repeater boosters. Um, because again, it's, it's not just about taking the signal that's here uh, and kind of rebroadcasting it at a higher gain. It's pulling different frequencies and aggregating those. So it, you're probably gonna end up better uh, 
that, that if you just had that cell repeater in the past, you're probably going to see a lot better performance with a great point and a high gain in What's the rate on the range? Meaning for the Wi Fi yeah. to broadcast it? Um, it Mileage may vary, but I mean, I would say, you know, I, I think about it in terms of square footage of a house, right? Two or three thousand square feet uh, around, and the less walls and obstructions, then you may go further. So, I, I mean, you probably see some scenarios where you may get 50 or 100 yards, and then you may see scenarios where, you know, 30 yards is about where I start to taper off a little bit. And so that's, you know, there's a lot of factors, interference and air quality, and Tons of things coming play there. Do you have any integration with Skylink or any plans to take a Elon stuff? <laughs> Star yeah. Starlink? Starlink. So different technology altogether, right? So Star what Starlink will do is it's satellite. So it's going to do low orbit satellite connections. Uh, historically, I know a lot of rural areas like my, where I live, when we first moved out there, the only internet that was available to us was or the only you know larger internet service provider was like HughesNet and they do satellites. The problem with that technology is those aren't low orbit satellites, they're upper orbit satellites. So there's a lot of latency to get the signal to and from wherever it's going. What Elon Musk is doing with Starlink is the satellites are going to be lower, there's going to be a broader network of those devices and supposedly the performance is significantly better. I haven't done a side-by-side -side test on that. So, but it, it's fundamentally different technology. Uh, and I think there's, there, you know, honestly, I think they'll end up being probably a significant competitor of cellular technology for internet. Uh, but we, when we moved out to, I say we moved out to the woods, um, my wife still kicks me for it. Um, we, we were on cellular internet for the first good long while, and now we've since gotten a wire line, but I still, I'm powering my house with a crater point now. If our wire line connection goes down, I can fail over onto a cellular connection. Sir? Like, silly question. I mean, this is one of the products you know we have in the trailer, but you know, this part I can't come to work. I can't turn it on. I'm at Verizon. They sold me a SIM card. I pay every month. I've never once received anything. I don't know the step by step procedure to turn this on in my trailer to make it work. So I came here from a flight set and one of those things out, and I haven't been able to get it. Let's we'll, we'll talk. We'll get you set up. Absolutely. So I call nobody in team. That, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me that Verizon, I mean, you know, those Verizon carrier reps are, are probably trying to sell you SIM activation. So something called a jetpack instead of work perfect. A jetpack? Like a little MiFi product. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I just want it to work. <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> you were saying that the uh, MiFi raised uh, 2,000 square feet. So if we leave that turned on in the trailer while we're on the travel day, would we be able to pick up the Wi-Fi then in our tow vehicle while we're traveling? Very likely. Uh, I mean, again, mileage may vary, and there's a lot of factors that come into that. But I would say yes, almost certainly. So You're, that's that's a. I mean, that's. What do you think? Twenty feet, thirty yeah. feet? Like yeah. I would think yes. Yeah, you'd be fine. So right now I'm relying on Wi-Fi in my car. Through OnStar, uh -huh. through GM's product. That way I can eliminate and both. Correct. Now, OnStar does other stuff that, you know, right. that is vehicle integrated and all that. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying displace that, but from a Wi Fi, wi -fi perspective, yes. Okay. I know you can't set a priority on, on uh, providers. But who would you say, if you had a trailer, who would you be sending a check to? <laughs> he used to work great too. I, what I, I did not, actually. <laughs> I did not, and probably would not. Uh, my, my stance on it is, it, you know, it, I would do some analysis where you think you are likely to go, right? Uh, what we've seen, especially with 5G stuff, now this is, and this is recent developments, right? T-Mobile has made a big push into expanding their 5G network into rural areas. So if you look at 5G spectrum maps right now, T-Mobile looks like a serious threat. And I know for a fact that AT&T and Verizon are kind of quaking in their boots right now because they know that T-Mobile is coming for them. So I would say there's a lot of healthy competition right now in the marketplace, which I think is a good thing. Uh, 
what, what I would say though is, you know, try, if you've got, especially if you've got a couple of locations that you know this is going to be a frequent spot for me, I would look into those coverage maps and figure out, you know, so that you know the places are, that are my bread and butter visit spots, I want to make, make sure that I'm good at those places. That's what I do. Last question. Uh, maybe this is for Albert. Uh, when, if we were to retrofit upgrade to uh, the new crater plate system, do you um, sell just that part of the hardware and then it's up to us then to go to the hardware to put in that hardware? Or do you sell the whole package with a uh, data package? To we go sell the whole hardware package and then would contact Step CG, which is our partner. And, and get your data on you touched on that and you plan to touch I have it. Uh, that gets a little bit up more outside my purview, right? So Cradle Point, we manufacture this hardware, right? There's also the antennas, and I think you guys are using the Parsec. The oh, the oh, Tau Glass, yeah. So we work with a couple different antenna manufacturers, so they're all they're all really good. So what I would say is, yeah, we do the hardware on the router itself. We also have our, you know, our cloud orchestrator portion, which is also a service that comes with. I think we're doing a three year out of the gate with you all, with you all, I believe. So beyond that, yes, that component is up to you. Now, when that shuts off, that doesn't mean your device is going to stop providing Wi-Fi. It means that all the cloud enhanced capabilities. So if you want to go in and track or reconfigure through our cloud portal, that stuff shuts off after that three year period. So I do encourage people to keep that up because that also is how we facilitate security patches and those types of software updates. So I do recommend that you keep that. Uh, and then in terms of the data plans, I think StepCG, our partner who, you know, we, don't, we don't sell direct, so StepCG is our reseller partner on this uh, relationship with Oliver. And they also work with a group called Mobility Help Desk that manages the data plan aspect of it. So there's kind of a, a, a little alliance ecosystem that we're doing for this one. It's the same question that the, the hardware that uh, your supply to Oliver put in our trailers, um, is it usable without a data plan? I mean, what features do you use it for if you don't? If you don't have a data plan, I mean, you could potentially, like, again, if you want to just connect the devices, uh, but I would say at that point, don't buy a critical point. If you're not going to get a data plan, I probably wouldn't spend the money on this. So it's a two step process that you buy the hardware and connect up for data plan. Sir? Uh, yeah, my name's Steve Burnett. I like this film. I purchased my brand spanking from Oliver five weeks ago. I could not get anybody at the Oliver factory to get the, uh, this to work. So I get back home from my placement plan on my son, who's an engineer. Oh, I know that he couldn't get it to work either. So I proposed to him. I think you could come by my campsite and get this. We'll take a look. Absolutely. <laughs> I've got kind of an off the wall question. I think uh, you mentioned something about tracking past trips, et cetera. Sure. What have you. I have a credit point system in my trailer. Somebody's put <coughs> my trailer, and y'all track it and tell me where it's at. If you have that GPS capability enabled, and likely, even without our advanced location, which is like the add on license that I referenced, right. uh, even without that, yes, we have kind of generalized location based. Uh, we can identify where that device is. So that could be a big bonus. It could be a big bonus. Yeah. That, that, finding, finding a stolen trailer would pay for the credit point a couple times <laughs> over, I think. <laughs> How much power is this device? Oh, good question. Uh, see me after class, and I'll, I'll look that spec up for you. It's, it's relatively low. Uh, I know that we've got customers that are also building these into like Pelican cases and doing like a battery pack type scenario as well. So. Um, it's, it's not a significant amount of drop. This may be an obvious question. I don't know. The, the mobility help desk, mobility help whatever, desk. Uh -huh. whatever that partner's called. I know, and I upgraded to a credit point, but I tried to get on the net cloud uh -huh. and wasn't able to because the administrative rights were held by Oliver. Is that right? Anyway, the, the mobility help desk got on the net cloud and told me what I needed to know, but it seems like they had ownership of all of that and just called their phone number and they would help me accomplish what I was after. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, we have, we purchased the kits, we have SIMS cards in the kits, and then 
And Jason can speak to this better than I can because he, he deals with this every day. But um, the, the car then gets registered in, in your name after we purchase it, and then that allows you to, to go through mobility help this and purchase the data plan if you're looking for it. Right. And, and so it, I would yeah. say if, if mobility's got the administrator account within NetCloud, uh, that's probably something we want to look into because um, even if they, I, I like them having access because those guys are really knowledgeable and they can troubleshoot and do some of that. But I also like the idea of you guys having access because if there's knobs and buttons you want to mess with on there, uh, you know, for those who, who want to, I'm not saying you all have to become IT experts, but. I may have misrepresented that. I apologize if I did, but I think it wasn't even Oliver. Apparently you're owned by some other entity above the Oliver name that said that they held the rights to the next Shouldn't round. be. Oliver's not a that. Well, maybe, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe. 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 Well, it was a strange deal, and, and, and I just said, well, if I just, if, if what I need to do is call your phone number and you'll take care of it. I think I was trying to change the password on my... On oh, your Wi-Fi? Yeah, it was a weird deal. We'll sync up on that. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of that. Okay. Sure. And then a second stupid question, because I'm good at those. Okay. Uh, the antenna on top is for picking up the cell service. Correct. Uh, does it also, when you send out the Wi-Fi signal for sitting outside the trailer and all that? Correct. Does that go from the router or does that go from the antenna? Through the antenna as well. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So we don't have that system of when we have a new trailer. How much is it to add on? The um, you would probably need to contact Jason and let them give you a quote as to what it would take. It's, it's pretty simple to add where we put the antenna and the router and so forth. Uh, right off the top of my head, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a, if you have the saw during the initial uh, manufacturing trailer, it's about a $2,000 option. So it would probably be a little more than that uh, if you were having a retrofitted post production just because of, you know, obviously our, our service guys for uh, <coughs> Jackson. So that would be a ballpark for you. $2,000 So, so uh, that would be, you know, that would be a good ballpark. Okay. Thank you. Then you also have your, your desk plan depending on your carrier. Sir, uh, basic since you also mentioned that you were going to be uh, on communications as well, that you tied together with this. Um, let's suppose we had Verizon and want to switch to another carrier. Uh, all carriers, if they keep saying all the cell towers in the same number, but they're not stopped. For 5G, especially in more rural areas, T-Mobile is, is really pushing ahead in terms of the 5G spectrum that they've got deployed. And some of that also has to do with, uh, you know, all, all the carriers go and bid this stuff out, all those specific frequencies, they bid that stuff out through the, what is it, the FCC? I forget how it works. Um, but they are purchasing those bands for a certain period of time, and some of it was just they got aggressive and bought up a lot of spectrum. So... But I, again, it, it really depends on where you're going to be. Uh, that's, that's how I would make that determination. Now, if you've also had customer service type issues with a specific carrier, I get it. Like, I, I don't have a lot of patience for that kind of stuff as well. If the carrier is not treating you right, feel free to shop and go elsewhere. Well, I suppose the point of the uh, camp trailer is I don't necessarily want to be next Right. I get it. So. If we were to get rid of one of the bigger carriers and go at the other side, the others are saying, well, we use the same towers. I don't know what that means in terms of the activity. We're going to use this as our focal point of nexus. Yeah, I, I would say there, there is a lot of that that happens, right, where certain towers are being leased out, you know, and people will put them up on their own property and the carriers will lease that tower space to put their own antennas on there. So that for sure does happen. Um, but it, it also has to do with but what frequencies are you broadcasting out of that tower and what 
available spectrum I, am I going to have access to on that same tower that AT&T and T-Mobile are both on? So it gets a little more nuanced and complex than for them to just say, we're on the same towers, we're just as good. Not necessarily. So, real quick, um, so I'm assuming the cradle point Wi-Fi booster LTE repeater thing uh -huh. that I own is capable, not with the power lever, is, is it capable of translating GSM or CDMA? So, for example, T-Mobile is a very good and T-Mobile is a GSM company and it's 100% so if you put it in there, the point doesn't care, right? Credit point doesn't care. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, it's completely agnostic. Uh, now we do have older devices that were carrier specific like that. Yeah. But all of our new modems are agnostic. They'll work with all three they're major carriers. Agnostic to uh, what, what modulation scheme they're using. What's that? What they are agnostic to whatever modulation Correct. scheme is being used. Correct. Thank you. I think we're about up on time, but I appreciate you guys. If you guys want to have more in-depth questions, if we want to troubleshoot some specific issues, I'll be available, and I'll be hanging out at the uh, Vendor's Pavilion later. I'll also have a guitar down there. You guys want to come sing a song with me. I have a retired full-time musician, so we will do that too. <laughs>